Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number, and for today's Tableau tutorial, I wanna dive into a couple of different options that you have for creating a bar in bar chart in Tableau. Um, so we'll get into sketching them here in just a moment, but typically with a bar and bar chart, you have you know, one bar in the background and then maybe a different colored bar in the foreground. And I think that this type of visual is very helpful for comparing two measures. I don't often use it for progress toward a goal. Um, we've done a webinar on that. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, I like to use this for measures that I'm looking for, maybe correlations between or uh, seeing how sort of two simultaneous stories play out. So how many inbound tourists do we have versus how many outbound? Um, how much did we buy? How much did we sell? How many people did we hire? How many people left, right? So being able to sort of see the sort of rise and the fall in these values over time. That's how I often use these charts. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll dive right into it. Uh, so the first and primary way that you may see people create a bar and bar chart is via a method called shared access. So let's go ahead and, and dive into that. Um, for the sake of this example, I'm using a data source called World Indicators. Uh, you very likely have this data source as well. If you go to My Tableau Repository, let me back up one step. If you go to your Documents folder, My Tableau Repository, uh, Data Sources, whatever version you have, uh, a lot of times there's a data source there called World Indicators. It has yearly high-level information for different countries, like their population and things like that. Um, so the question here is, which countries in Europe saw GDP decline between 2011 and 2012? Um, so I've sort of helped myself out here a little bit and done a couple of calculations ahead of time to be able to get 2011 and 2012 GDP as their own measures. And uh, so I've got this worksheet filtered down to Europe. I've got country on rows. I'll go ahead and drag the 2011 GDP to columns. I've got this bar chart showing the uh, 2011 GDP by country. There's a few countries which it looks like didn't report uh, their GDPs, but that's all right. So let's go ahead and turn this into a bar and bar chart with 2012 in the foreground. Uh, so I'll grab my 2012 GDP field, hover directly over the top of my 2011 GDP axis and drop that measure on there. So now I have what's sometimes called a shared axis bar chart or a combined axis bar chart uh, where those bars are displayed side by side. Um, so we're just a couple key steps away from getting this to be bar in bar. Uh, first is I'm gonna remove measure names from rows and drop this on the color tab in the marks card. And that actually is going to start us out with a, uh, oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and undo something here. I realized I did a few things ahead of time, which is gonna change this. So by default, the stack marks would be on. So that means that these bars would stack one on top of the other, uh, but I don't want them to stack. I want them to actually both start at zero on the x-axis. So what we're gonna do there is go to the analysis drop down on the toolbar, go to the stack marks drop down, and toggle stack marks off. I also need them to be different sizes. So what I'm gonna do is get another copy of measure names. I can either track that down in my data pane or use a control drag to use a copy of the one that's already on the worksheet. I need to get a copy of measure names to size. So right now I've got 2011 GDP as a small bar in the foreground, 2012 GDP as a larger bar in the background. I think I wanna reverse that. The quick way of doing that is just reordering those fields in the measure names legend. And now I can just sort of at a quick glance see like, okay, Germany had a larger GDP in 2011 than they did in 2012. Whereas like Russia actually had a larger GDP in 2012 than they did in 2011. So that's sort of the classical uh, approach to bar in bar charts. Um, maybe you gotta do a little filtering. And uh, if you're following along and these defaulted to different colors, I think I changed those ahead of time. So you may just need to change them from blue and orange to, in this case, I did light gray and dark gray. Okay. So one of the downsides of the shared access approach or one of the limitations I should say is that I don't have the ability to color just the interior bar based on whether it's uh, longer or shorter than the background bar. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna create a calculated field. 
and I'll say um, GDP declining. So if the GDP is declining, that would mean that the 2012 GDP is less than the 2011 GDP. So if I try to take this GDP declining field and put this on the color tab in the marks card, it doesn't just change the color of the bar in the foreground, it actually changes the color of both the foreground and background bars. So that kind of situation is one of the main reasons that I will often think about using what is called a dual axis bar and bar chart. So that's our second main option, option two, dual axis. So let's go ahead and look at how this is just a little bit of a different setup and some of the flexibility that it can give you. Okay, so same initial setup, Europe's on filters, countries on rows. Same initial starting point, 2011 GDP goes to columns. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab 2012 GDP and here's where this is gonna diverge. So instead of dropping the 2012 GDP on the 2011 GDP axis, I'm gonna go to the far side of my screen till I get this dotted line and then drop the 2012 GDP there. So now I have these two different axes, one for 2012 GDP, one for 2011. So this is where we need to start doing a little cleanup. Uh, I'm gonna right click on that top axis and make sure it is synchronized to the bottom axis. So we'll say synchronize axis. Then I'm gonna right click on the top axis and just deselect show header. Um, so I'll clean up the bottom axis here in just a moment. But the beauty of what we just did is that now we have an individual section in the marks card for the 2011 GDP and for the 2012 GDP. So to um, edit the sizes, I need to sort of edit them independently now. So maybe the 2011 GDP, I'll go to that section of the marks card, make those bars a little wider. Go to 2012, make those bars a little skinnier. Uh, once again, I'll filter out the countries which didn't report GDP. So initially this looks very similar, right? Germany is less, Russia is more. Here's where things get interesting. I can go to just the 2012 section of my marks card, um, and I'm gonna get that field uh, GDP declining and put that on the color tab, again, just in the 2012 GDP section. And now notice it just changed the bars in the foreground, but not the background. So I can do some quick edits here, and then I can use you know a brighter color like orange to draw attention to the countries whose GDPs are in decline uh, while using a darker gray to uh, not draw attention as much to the countries whose GDPs increased year over year. Okay, so at a high level, that's some of the big differences. I think in some ways the uh, the dual axis can be a little bit easier to manage as well because all you got to do for the sizes is go to these sections in the Mars card at the size slider. Back at the shared axis, you have to like. Uh, I got the little recording thing in my way. I got to go to the uh, size legend, hit the drop down, edit sizes, and then like tinker with this slider to get the size of one bar to change without changing the size of the other bar. So it's just a little bit more involved um, from a long-term management standpoint. So I would say that the bar and bar chart option gives you the most flexibility. Um, of course, if you already are so used to the shared access one, you could just keep doing that, but maybe the uh, bar and bar chart uh, via the dual axis style just gives you a little bit of uh, extra oomph to your arsenal. So uh, thanks so much for checking in for this week's video. Really appreciate you dropping by. Um, again, feel free to check out the uh, link below for progress toward a goal uh, where we have a webinar where we've talked about that in more detail. And uh, we'll look forward to catching you on another video here soon.